I'm delighted to be here today. And I'm so passionate about what I'm going to talk about. And I think in each one of our lives, it's probably one of the most important things, which is how do we get a successful career? So how do we make the right choice of jobs, whether most of you and a lot of people who will be watching this later are people who might be beginning their first job in their lives. It is that time of the year when it's at campus placement time and you're really looking forward to why you're going to take the job that you're going to do. Or people are taking lateral moves. And nowadays, people take lateral moves, not just at age 30, 40, but even at the age of 60, as you just heard, I made a lateral move when, just before I touched 60. So it is indeed very important for all of us, our jobs, and it all really needs to lead to a successful career. So I'm truly going to talk about what is it, that simple truth, that we are all hankering after in getting a successful career. So as we embark on a journey for a job, what do you think are the considerations that weigh with people? Is it really the money? Is it the monthly paycheck, the annual bonus that I'm going to get? Or is it truly about my academic background? I've done marketing, I've done finance, I've done accounting, and therefore, these are the only career choices that I can truly make. Or is it about quickly climbing a tree, you know, within probably a month of my joining or at the most a year of my joining, I truly really now want to look at the corner office and see how quickly I can climb that ladder. So are the comp is the company such that's going to give me very rapid promotions? Or is it truly, you know, herd mentality? Everyone from my college is going there, or my uncle recommended it, my neighbor recommended it, one thing or the other. I'm just following this thing. Or is it the idea of a jet-setting life that I believe I'll get to travel a lot, the facilities of the companies are great, and most people stumble into their jobs because of any one or a combination of the reasons I talked about today. And what do you think the result is if you indeed stumble in your job for any one of these reasons? Well, here you are, frustrated as hell. And what is really driving that frustration? You're saying, there's no work-life balance. I joined this company because I thought I was going to have great work-life balance. Look at what my life is now. Or the most favorite crave, in fact, my favorite saying in my 40-year career is all bosses are necessary evil. And one of my ex-bosses is right here. So I truly say all bosses are necessary evil. We need to manage them. So you're crib, crib, crib all the time about your boss. And probably one of the worst things that happened to you, the moolah that you saw there earlier, in terms of money, you thought is actually too little. What do you think with any one of these emotions in your mind, it's just going to drive you to say, how do I hop my next job? And today's savvy generation thinks about the next job as looking at LinkedIn, monster.com, any other one of the job sites. Probably people of my generation still depend upon the old fashioned newspaper to look at what are the other ads that are exciting enough for me to go in. So if all these are the problems that we truly face in achieving the perfect career, what do you think should drive each one of us as we look for that successful career? And to my mind, the answer is very simple. If you cannot identify with the company that you work for, please forget any dream of a successful career. So if you cannot really identify the, for the purpose for which society allowed you to conduct your business. And mind you, companies function not merely to give return to their shareholders. Companies function because the society allowed us to be, come into being to serve a purpose. And if you are at odds with that purpose of the company, you're absolutely, none of the other things that you thought were going to work for you are indeed going to work for you. And in this journey, I'm going to give you a few illustrations as to how relevant this is. So I've picked three of the sectors that I'm probably the most familiar with. I'm on the uh, board of a leading 
consumer company. So why do you think a person joins a leading consumer company? Is it merely because it's fantastic, you know, they have great marketing, great branding, I like to pound the streets and really meet all my sales targets? No, it's about being in the business of personal care and home care. And the minute you identify with that purpose of the company, whether you're the salesperson, the marketing person, or in charge of supply management and the factories, you will be at one with the purpose of the company. And you just will see how your career progress thereafter. Another great example, I'm on the board of another company, which is a pharmaceutical company. But if we ever thought about this company being a pharmaceutical company, all our life would be driven by what is the cutting edge research that we are doing, how are my, medic, uh, my repre sales representatives out on the road to cover doctors and other intermediaries. But if you think about your company as a company that is in the business of the wellness of the human beings that inhabit this planet, it takes you to a completely different level. And any job, whether it's a support job or whether it's your frontline job or eventually the corner, corner uh, room job, it'll become very different. And then the industry which is closest to my heart, having spent 40 years in this industry, the financial services industry. This is an industry, as you know, has been a lot in the news, particularly in, in the Western world, for all of the excesses. So if what drives you is really your annual bonuses, the jet-setting life, the air, aircraft that I showed you earlier, you know what a mess this you can make of that company. But if what drives you is financial empowerment, if what drives you is the security and safety of people's finance when you're in the asset management business, you will again take that company to a very different height. So these are just illustrations in the core philosophy that indeed for each one of us, the thing that matters the most really is our complete identity. We've got to be comfortable in our skin as we go and rush to our work every day. If you don't feel that way, you're going to drag yourself to work every day and do one of the clips that I talked about earlier. So let's assume we, we identify with the core, we are at one with the company. What are some of the other things that truly drive successful careers? And oh, before I come to that, I do want to talk about, whilst I said all of these uh, things that we need to bear in mind when it comes to commercial enterprises, but you actually don't need to bear any of this in mind for some of the noblest professions that we know about. When you look at the military in any country, India, any country in the world, no, you, have you ever heard a soldier talk about his monthly pay? Or any one of the other reasons that we talked about, because he's driven with a much larger purpose of dying for his country. Similarly, civil services. What is driving it? Public good, public service, that's what's driving it. And closer home to all of us in India, as you know, this is one game that keeps the country together. When it comes to the game of cricket, do you notice the very difference when people are playing for the country or when they're playing in an IPL match? where they actually get auctioned out on the base, they, they get bidded by the highest bidder, it's a very, very different game. And I don't know how many of us, as we watch uh, cricket on television, feel that entire intense, this thing, when someone's really playing for the World Cup and you're cheering for India versus any one of these amusing, but just another IPL game. So there are, as I was talking to you, a successful career is to start with, all about identifying with the purpose, but in this road to success, my three or four management mantras is something I'd like to talk to you about. And something that's absolutely essential is this whole passion to win. In a more colloquial language, I would say it is the killer instinct. It is that which tells us, come what may, I'm going to get my goal. Passion to win sounds better, that's why I put it as passion to win. Uh, but it's truly my strong belief that I have experienced in my 40 years of career that if you truly set yourself a goal and you make a public commitment about that goal that you're going to meet, not only will nobody stop you from getting there, the universe will conspire to make it happen. 
The only thing that stops us from getting there is our own limited imagination. So if you have the passion to win and you're at one with the company, you're going there. And let's all of us remember that it's all about teamwork. If you look at organizations, the way they've evolved, in the earlier days, in the industrial age, they were patterned on the basis of the military style of functioning. It was command and control. Because information, knowledge resided at the top of the ladder. And therefore, there was a command and control structure. We were all great soldiers. But in today's information age, that relationship is broken. Today, it's all about the, the junior most frontline person will have far more information and will probably be far smarter than the boss sitting in the corner office. So it's all about teamwork. And if you indeed want to be successful, the one adage you always need to bear in mind is, not only do I want people as smart as myself, I actually want people who are smarter than me, who compliment me, because you're as good as the weakest link in your team. The other thing is about empathy. You know, today each one of us is driven by what I call the QSQT syndrome. This is not the famous Bollywood movie, Kayamat Se Kayamat Tak. It is the life of a listed company which says quarter se quarter tak. And therefore, each one of us is driven by our quarter to quarter to quarter goals. But what does that make us? It makes us robotic. It makes us taskmasters. What is it that people are looking for? Whether it's your boss, your peer, your subordinate, it's about empathy. It's about care, about emotional connect. IQ is no good unless it is complemented with an equally good EQ. Your emotional quotient has to be indeed very high for you to achieve that great success. And last but certainly not the least, this is a syndrome that each one of us in this room and whoever else listens to this is guilty of, which is we all love our comfort zones. We all take, you know, we actually re reach some mastery in what we are. I remember when I was a lawyer, I started my career as a lawyer. I thought I was a cat's whisker in law. And when my boss asked me to go and instead run treasury for my earlier organization, I was getting out of my comfort zone. I squealed, cried, did everything possible not to do that job because I was being take, taken out of my comfort zone. And I, really, I shuddered to think as to where I would have been if I had not gotten out of my comfort zone. So the one thing to guard against is really challenge yourself. Not everyone is lucky enough to get mentors, bosses, who will really bring them there. So these are the few of the management mantras that have worked for me. And I thought I'd share it with you. Thank you so much for the patient sharing.